beautiful situation from my point of view because uh, in the City Hall uh, I'd got to know the Coordinator General, Sir James Holt, because uh, some of the work interlinked and he took a shine to me. And when I, I went to the university, he controlled the university. The university uh, was owned by the state government and it was the university paid a pretty rent to, to use it. But all the buildings and grounds and developments were under the Coordinator General's control. And uh, I was chief, my title was Chief Executive Officer of Buildings and Grounds for the University, so I had to liaise. I didn't do a comprehensive plan because I didn't have the resources and the men to do it, but I, I did parts of the plan and I put an axis where the, you know, where the lake is, through the lake, up where the bookshop is and made that an actual line. And I had two taller buildings there on either side of it, one behind physics and one balancing it on the other side. And I put that building that's got on the piloti that goes across the main axis. Mm. And that, it's got another three stories to go because we only built the bottom half. The physics annex. Hmm? The physics annex? Yeah. Mm. And it's a shame that they don't take that up because it would give a far Sky more interesting yeah. skyline and yeah. get some intensity around there. Mm. Well, so I did master planning of all of that area. And when you did the bookshop, you kept that low so that axis yeah. would still work. Yeah, yeah. And I also did it on the axis of Hawken Drive where we built the J.D. Storey Administration Building and we, we had a series of uh, mini campuses and they all worked for some years and uh, then they put managers in instead of architects and planners and the manager said, look, he's got all those uh, spaces there with people carrying cars and walking around. They're perfect building sites because they're fully... So they whacked the building in every one of them. I enjoyed working in the Great Court because when I took it over, see the thing had been tilted, um, twisted so that it faced the proposed bridge uh, at the end of Boundary Street or yeah, that's right. Melbourne Boundary, Street, you're right. Boundary, yeah. And uh, by twisting it, they'd had to scrape the top of the ground off because it was uh, rock. It was. Uh, and it, so it sat on the actual tuff and there was no soil there whatsoever. I got photographs so of it, couldn't believe it. And um, the front of it, it had, it had been the headquarters uh, of, the, of General Blamey for the Kokoda campaign and he fought the Kokoda campaign from the university as the first occupant. And of course he put military huts everywhere and carved all the bloody ground there. <laughs> Just knows what. And, uh, we had to patch all that up, you know, that was, that was fascinating. And I remember saying that, you know, we, we, we should put the trees in the Great Court, and, but being tough, no tree would see, you see. So I said, well, we can drill holes and break up the rock a bit. No, you can't, you see, so, because we've all got uh, experiments with the test tubes and God knows what set up around this place. And, so we waited for one long weekend and blew all the bloody holes out, smashed all the bloody experiments, put the trees in and nobody said anything about it.